Hi everyone, today I'm going to be talking about conic sections and the name actually tells you what this subject is about. If you take a cone and you slice it through in different ways, the conic sections are the curves that you'll see. So if you cut straight across at right angles to the axis of a cone, you're going to get a circle. If you cut at a shallow angle, you'll see an ellipse. If you cut at an angle that's the same as the angle of the cone itself, you'll see a parabola, and any steeper you'll get a hyperbola. So those are the four types of conic section, the circle, the ellipse, the parabola, and the hyperbola. And these curves, these shapes, crop up in maths all the time. They're also important in the real world. And so that's the subject for today, conic sections. <music> The conic sections are an important, familiar and ubiquitous family of curves obtained by slicing with a plane a right circular double cone extended indefinitely in both directions. Depending on the angle of the slice to the axis of the cone, the resulting curve may be a circle, an ellipse, a parabola or a hyperbola. The circle is a limiting case of the ellipse when the slice is made at right angles to the axis, while the parabola is the limiting case of both the ellipse and the hyperbola when the slice is made parallel to the side of the cone. The name conic sections comes from the eight volume work Conics by Apollonius, who also gave us the names ellipse, parabola and hyperbola. Another geometric way to define the conics is as the locus or path of all points in the plane whose distances are from a fixed point called the focus and A from a given straight line called the directrix have a constant ratio. This ratio R over A is known as the eccentricity E. The circle has an eccentricity of zero as the eccentricity increases from near zero corresponding to a nearly circular ellipse, the ellipse stretches until the right hand side of it disappears to infinity. E becomes one and the ellipse turns into a parabola with just one open branch. Like the circle, the parabola has only one shape, though it may look different depending on how much it is enlarged or diminished. As the eccentricity increases beyond one, the lost right hand end of the ellipse reappears from the other side of infinity, so to speak, and turns into the left hand branch of a hyperbola. Because a hyperbola is effectively an ellipse split in two by infinity, it comes as no surprise that these curves are related in an inverse way. An ellipse consists of all points whose distances from two foci have a constant sum, while a hyperbola is made from all points whose distances from two foci have a constant difference. These definitions also apply to the circle and the parabola if the two foci are considered to coincide in the case of the circle and to be separated by an infinite distance in the case of the parabola. In terms of algebra, the family of conics represents all the possible real number solutions to the general quadratic equation ax squared plus bxy plus cy squared plus dx plus ey plus f equals zero. In other words, the graph of any quadratic with real solutions is always a conic section. The key quantity is the difference b squared minus 4ac. If this is less than zero, the graph is an ellipse, a circle, a point, or no curve. If b squared minus 4ac equals zero, the graph is a parabola, two parallel lines, one line, or no curve. If it's greater than zero, the graph is a hyperbola, or two intersecting lines. Conic sections also represent all the possible orbits an object can follow when under the gravitational influence of a single massive body. A closed orbit, such as that followed by a satellite going around the Earth, has the shape of a circle or an ellipse. 
An open orbit is one in which a spacecraft or other object doesn't follow a closed circuit around a gravitating body, but simply has its path bent into the shape of a parabola or a hyperbola. In future videos we'll look in more detail at each of the conic sections in turn. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon to discover more maths.